I'm live right now, babe. I'm live right now, babe. <laughs> Testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 testing. I got the chat on my other monitor if you want to talk. Hit me up. Figuring out what I'm going to work on today. Last thing I was working on was animating the sumo wrestler. That went pretty good. Still probably not done though. I think this time we're going to try to. I need to be able to push somebody over. I'm tired of looking at these fat guys and not seeing them knock into each other. So that's what we're going to do. And then we'll upload that to itch. What else we got? Oh yeah, I've been looking at rag dolls. Gave this guy a ragdoll. And I've used ragdolls before and they never behave this way. Where part of the vertices of the model are just like gone. And then they sink into eternity. I don't know what's up with that. That's bizarre to me. <laughs> Absolutely bizarre. It'll be a hot minute before we get a ragdoll going in here. I'll figure it out though. I think it has to do with the weight painting because the only vertices that are sagging off into eternity are the areas where um, look at him go. 
are the areas that I set there to be no weight painting. But that doesn't mean unity should make them act on physics and fall to the earth. I don't know what's up with that. I'm just going to undo that. Oh, crap. Did I save that? Yep, I saved it with the ragdoll. Revert! <laughs> yeah, so my friends came over yesterday, or Friday, and they know I'm making a sumo game. And all I had at the time was these two fat guys just staring at each other doing dances. And I wanted to impress them with my game dev skills. So I just tried to hook up a simple animation and push the other guy over. It worked out pretty good. I'll show you that. Uh... There you go. <laughs> so I can go push the guy. And it is a manual operation to let him roll. Because it's using the third person character controller. So they keep him upright. So I have to turn that off. Boom. No? Oh, there you go. Now I fell over. <laughs> that's, that's what I did. And the code is trash to do that, too. Which is pretty sweet. Uh, where's that? I got... This is the same script on both of the sumo wrestlers. And if it's the player... Which, how do I determine if it's the player? Oh, a checkbox in the UI. If it's the player, they stop doing their ceremonial ritual before they fight. And then they go into the fight stance. And then they use the shove animation. And the shove animation, if I can bring it up. Which I call Hadouken. Just to confuse everyone. Uh, it's supposed to have an animation. Oh, it's called shove. There you go. The red guy's doing the animation. He just pushes the guy. At about a third of the way through, quarter of the way through, Unity will call the method shove force on a script so I have a Rikishi controller with a function called shove force and I'm just logging that it happened and I say <laughs> I call the method get shoved on the enemy and the force is the direction from the player to the enemy times the shove force and I want that to happen in fixed update I think because I'm using physics based physics based movement and controlling We could take this horseshit code and gut it. Or just roll with it. I don't really know. It would be nice if the enemy would actually play against you, right? I think Unity 
behavior tree tutorial. Uh, I think Unity has a scripting system as part of their tutorials that lets you use behavior trees. Seems like it's a pretty standard way to model uh, NPC behavior. Might have to get into that. I don't know if I'll do that in this video or not. <laughs> Ooh, there's a lesson. Oh, am I on the lesson? Ah, circular links. Damn you, circular links. Maybe the next one. Maybe the next one's the one that I want. It wasn't. That was a joke. I knew that was going to happen. I'm not stupid. <sighs> Goodbye, Ragdoll. I will miss you. I think I want to provide some form of continuity to the game. Like if the enemy, if you were the enemy, leave the game, it just restarts. It resets the scene. But a pretty redneck way to do that, I think, is like application load level or application load scene. Load scene. I can give you an int, or I can give you the scene name. Oh, and it's scene manager that load scene, not application like it used to be, which is what I'm accustomed to. <laughs> In my mad dash to have something playable for my friends. I just grabbed the Unity third person user controller. I'll show you what I did. So you can do it if you want to. I imported the standard assets. I grabbed this little son of a gun. Pooped him right in there. And there you go. And then I deleted everything that was Ethan and parasitically took over with my Rikishi model Rikishi and then I added this closed circuit television camera another rig, rig in the standard assets cameras package you just go assets import package cameras they got a little read me in there. I just wanted to follow the red guy, mostly. Oh, yeah. The camera was like this. It was like looking at his center of mass because I just said, camera, hey, look at, look at the enemy. Which, of course, looks fine now because I backed the camera up. But at the time, the camera was like right here. So I made this little camera target object, which is closer to his center.
All right. If anybody leaves the ring, I want to restart the game. Let's work on that. I think one way to do that would be have a big capsule collider the size of the ring. And if anybody leaves that capsule collider, like on trigger exit, I'll say boom. Game over. You suck. Let's do that. Make a script. Reset if game over. <laughs> I'll add it to the ring or dohyo. It already has a mesh collider, but now let's add a capsule collider. The way this is modeled, it looks like I should just use a sphere. That might be more efficient. I don't know. Well, where the heck's the sphere collider? Whoa! They really made that a uh, big sphere. Let me dial that back quite a bit. Quite a bit. Show me the wireframe shaded. Uh, I want people to be able to like step slightly off, but if you completely leave the collider, yeah, if you completely leave the collider, you done, you lose. 0 0.49, 9. Five. That's pretty good. I don't want them to be able to just walk up to the edge and then stay in the game. That's crap. This is stupid. Why don't I just... Why don't I just detect when they collide with the ground? That's what a smart person would do. What the hell am I doing? Get rid of this. I have this ground here. Give this guy two mesh colliders. Interesting that that's what it does. I would rather just use a box collider at this point. Okay, is trigger? Yup. Let's add our script. Reset game of over. Let's rename this. Reset game if touched. So if somebody touches the object that this script is attached to, We want to reset the game. So, quad. Let's call this the floor. Let's put it by the ring. Okay. Nothing selected. 
Strange. New script. Not new script, buddy. Not new script. Script probably won't load because Unity hates me. Where's that game? Reset game if touched. Is that what I call this thing? Reset if game if touched. God damn it. Yesterday I went to a pool party. I was telling everybody I was making a sumo game. So I started challenging people to sumo matches in the pool. I got wrecked. By old people at that too. People like twice my age. Thought I had the fat buffness that was the ideal sumo wrestler's body build. Nope. Got my ass kicked. Uh, where was I going with this? Yeah. If somebody touches the floor, they die. So. Script. Reset game of touch. What's that thing on trigger enter? No example available in C sharp. That's a first. I'm pretty sure they just mean that you want to do this. Debug.log. String that format. Blank touch the floor. Okay. What do you mean you got build errors? Where? Reset if game if touch not found. Yeah, well, it's gone, buddy. So do a clean. Now do a build. Still sucking butts. Why is this thing sucking so hard? Uh, reset game of touch. Basically the moral of the story is name your C sharp classes correctly the first time. Or you will not be productive for the rest of the day. Dude! Why are you complaining? Oh, my class isn't even in there. Where the hell is it? It's like it didn't get added to the solution. Good God. Nope. Go away. Add... Um, so like an include in solution. Ah, Visual Studio for Mac. Why are you such a turd? It's in the programming folder, right? Yep, 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 yep. Hmm. Visual Studio Windows has a whole bunch of nice 
fancy buttons in the Solution Explorer to help you with these kinds of problems. Clearly, I don't get those fun things in the Mac. Stop opening that. Nothing add? Add existing item. Add file. Yeah, overwrite it. Don't cry about it. Just do what I say. Oh, well, that's it for me. We're going to redo this crap. Don't save. Just delete it. Just fucking. It's gone. Stop crying. Reset game if touched. If this thing fails to build, I'm going to be so upset. Will you open the dang file for me? Hey, we got it to build. There you go. All that work. Just to get one log statement whenever we touch something. All right, logs. Show me the money. Bonk. I'm on it. I'm hopping all over it. Oh, All right. see ya. There we go. Hmm. Let's give this thing a little bit more. I'm curious where the collider is. Oh, okay, that's the y-axis. The z is what I wanted, so. Ooh. Why did that get all jacked up? Control-Z, Control-Z! Mondo. 0 0.1. That's better. 0 0.1. There you go. I just need, like, a little film on top for when people touch it. Raise the roof a little bit. Oh, okay, that's down. Negative zero point zero zero one. Two, three, four, five. There you go. There you go. On trigger, enter. Nothing. That's trash. Oh, damn it. I got to quit clicking. D oh, God. I do this all the time. I always forget to add the freaking script. Rookie mistake. Here you go. There you go. Player touch the floor. Player touch the floor. Player touch the floor. <sighs> Enemy touch the floor. Player touch the floor. Bitch. You die. Okay.
Cool, we got that going on. Let us restart the game. Scene manager. Load scene. Zip. Probably don't want to do it instantly. Well, <laughs> the lighting is just like gone. It's kind of strange that the lights go out. Yeah, I don't like that it's instant. Uh, what do I return? Print? That's not what I want. Return an I enumerate tour. That's how you do something at a later time. There you go. Now it's going to wait a second before it restarts the game. I am curious to see why the lighting gets all hosed. I don't have an explanation for that one. Though I don't think I'm just going to go with just straight up resetting the scene. Weird. It's kind of fun. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Do the properties of the light change? Why is it getting... Why do the lights get turned out? What's up with that? Oh. It deletes everything. Okay. But then it re-adds everything. So what's up with that? Unity, lighting, load, scene, dark. Oh, it only happens in the editor?
I'm going to trust that it only happens in the editor. Hmm. Is there a way to pass variables to scenes? I think maybe we could keep like how many times you won versus how many times another person won. Good link, bro. Hell yeah, I'll just use player press. It'll be easy for somebody to just go ahead and overwrite what their score is, but there's no leaderboards or anything, so I care not. I care not. All right, let's put a little score indicator on there. Shouldn't spend a whole lot of time on it. It's going to be short-lived. Just going to upload it to itch and let people play against the red guy. The red guy is not going to attack them yet. So this might be a waste of time, but I don't think so. I think it'll be a nice incremental step in the right direction. Okay. So let's do that then. Um, methinks. Get them in their fighting pose. Aw, they don't stay in the fighting pose. Jerks. Now they will. Oh, no, they all touch the floor and then that, that's awesome. That was an accident. I 
I was thinking I'd make little like PNGs of the blue fighter, the PNG of the red fighter, and then put those in the corner and then the number next to them, but it's probably sufficient to have a blue number in the left corner and a red number in the right corner, corresponding to how many wins that they have. All right. Actually do the thing. Do the thing. <sighs> Let's make a new thing. Let's call this the scoreboard. Why they make the canvas incredibly large, I do not know. Let's make the canvas take up the entire, let's make this thing take up all of it. Another one. Scoreboard is the whole screen right now. Under the scoreboard, we're gonna have a couple of text elements. Let's call this player score. Uh, big fat goose egg. Start with font size of like 20. Can I give it a better font than Arial? Library, Unity, Default, Resources. How do I add a new font to Unity? I'm going to want to keep using that. Place the font file in your assets folder. All right. Arial does look very basic, doesn't it? That's what we're going to go with for now. Ferdy. Okay. Bold color. Can I give it a color? Oh, where's the color? What color is my dude? What color are you, bro? Oh, he's gonna be blue. Should be a hex value in here. I can copy. There it is. Bonk. Baloo. And then for the red. <laughs> it hurts to headbang because of the sumo wrestling I was doing yesterday. Sad days. Let's duplicate this thing. Enemy score. Okay. Uh, player score. Let's just put them there. 
how does that behave at different viewport sizes? It doesn't behave for shit. <laughs> Nice. That's why I typically use anchors instead. So if my anchor is the lower lower left corner, right? Okay, that's the lower right corner. So all zeros is the lower left corner. And I go to the right like 50 pixels and then to the top like 50 pixels. Now is that pixels or percentage or what? It looks like it is pixels. That should be good for now. So where's my number, brah? Why can't I see my number? Where is it? Well, where the butts is the number? I don't know. Unity lies to me sometimes. Nope. Is it because they gave it like a no width and a height? That could be it. Uh, 100. 100. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's an improvement. It's 100, 100 at 50. Put the anchor in the center. Uh, that ain't right at all. What, did this thing just reset? No, do not reset. Shift, set, pivot. Only set the pivot. Oh, I just, I'm setting the pivot at the center. No. Pivot at the bottom. Okay. And then set position at 50. 50. Hmm. That's more in line with what I wanted. And does it stay in the right spot as I do viewports? Yep, 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 yep. Okay. For this thing, I want it to go I like how it's the same size, but it looks different. Is it because I didn't do best fit? I don't know why that looks the way that it does, but let's uh try to be cool like this thing was. Minus 50, 50. You justify yourself right, buddy. There we go. And then with hundred a hundred oh I didn't change the Y position in this that's why it's looking dorky okay cool
Could be worse. Let's roll with that. Okay, we got this fancy little score text. Got us here a scoreboard. Let's make a scoreboard script. Public text. It's getting really annoying in Telesense. There we go. Player. Player score. Public. All right. Let me get my imports correct here because it's complaining way too much for my liking. Use Unity and Engine to UI text. And the score. Okay. At the start, I want to get the score from the player prefs. Let's just have two methods. Void add to player score. Record player win. Private int player score. Private int enemy score. Player score plus plus. This, oh, no, 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 no. So if the player, if another script detects that the player won, tell the scoreboard to add a point to the player score and update the UI to show that. So at the start of the scene though, I want to load from the player prefs. So player prefs dot player score. Player score equals player prefs. Get in. This is about as insecure as you could possibly be. <laughs> Cause you can open up your browser, go into index DB and give yourself a score of a bajillion million and then jump off and kill yourself. And then the next scene will load with a bajillion million. 
but I don't really care at this point. Like, people aren't playing this game from people aren't even playing this game. So, we will cross. We'll add a server component at some point to track score if we want to. Uh, so we should probably write to player press. Player press dot set in player score player score player press they call they probably call it player press because it's not it's not for things like keeping the player score it's like does the user like to invert their mouse control what sensitivity does the user have like public information that if somebody found out what it was it wouldn't be a big deal um, and if they change it it's like whatever you're just you're changing your sensitivity there's an options menu to do that anyway all right we got magic constants right here that's probably not good um, private const player score key player score private const enemy score key helps if I spell private right Why is this thing sucking? Namespace could not be found. Are you using the directive or assembly reference? It's a very strange error. Oh, because I didn't. Because I think that's the type, because I, I meant for it to be a string. My bad. Okay. All right, it did a read from user press and it didn't blow up. That's good. Also did not try to update the UI. We should update the UI. thing is so simple it doesn't need to be abstracted out like crazy I think I need a change of tunage 
This is what I am listening to. Oh, I was listening to uh the playlist is called Premium Royalty Free Backing Guitar Tracks. And I was like, okay, yeah, royalty free. I'll listen to that. And then uh, my YouTube video that I uploaded had a Counter Strike, or not Counter Strike, a copyright claim on it. Uh, so clearly, not every. You can't just trust people on Spotify to give you royalty free stuff. But if Twitch FM uploads something, that's probably good. Okay. Where'd my score go? Okay, cool. So now, whenever... Whenever somebody scores, we need to update the scoreboard. So let's do that. Uh, let's give this thing a tag, player. Kabonk. Oh, I like how I saved it and then it like didn't save it. Player. Why can't I add a tag? That is frustrations. Can I add a tag? Like, oh, it did add it. It did add it. It just, it's just a crappy user experience. That's all. The list is empty. No, the list isn't empty. You just suck. No, maybe I have to hit enter. That's what it was. I probably don't need to tag him as enemy. I can just say if the ground hits, if something hit the ground and it's not the player, then give the player a score. <laughs> this thing resets the game of touch in one second. Uh, so whenever that happens. If collided collided with dot compare tag, uh, player. So if it's the player, add score to the enemy. Else. How do I do that again? Uh, oh, this thing needs to get a handle to the scoreboard. Public void stuff. Probably does not need to be public. No one's gonna call this. So, uh, private scoreboard. 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 So we created that script. Now I just need to get a handle to that script so I can call the methods on it. Scoreboard equals find object with tag. Game object with tag. Get game object dot find. How do I find a dang object with a tag? Unity. Find object with tag. Isn't that the point of giving it a tag? Do I have to call it on? Uh, uh, there we go. Find game object. Object. Should only be one. Scoreboard. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. So we find game object of type. Get game. Oop. Find game. Find objects of type. Scoreboard. Scoreboard equals. Okay. So 
scrub oh dot That's weird. Doesn't the scoreboard have public methods on it? No, we didn't make them public. We suck. Let me bring this chat up. Somebody could have told me that, but they didn't. Such a lonely day. Uh, public void import. Identifier expected. Dot. Record if it is the player, record the enemy win. Else record player win. Alright, cool. Ugh. What's the camera looking at? Oh, it's set to auto-target the player. Why do you do the things that you do? Boom. Win for me. Boom. Boom. Do I need, like, a loading screen? Because they sit there in their T pose for a good minute. They sit in the T-post for a really long time. I want them to immediately get out of the T-post. Uh, then just don't start in the T-post. Boom, bitch. There we go. <laughs> Does it? Oh, you can tie. That's crap. That's a bug. That's the first person to touch the ground in the game. If we both go. Yeah, we both. Okay. Let's make sure that's not what's happening. That ain't going to work. Just going to make a commit. Good. Get housekeeping. Housekeeping. Wow, that's a lot of crap that I added. What do we do? Added a basic, added basic score keeping, but it's buggy. We'll fix. Cool. So we can fix that in the scoreboard. We can fix that where we're recording the score. Let's fix that where we're recording the score. It's interesting that it doesn't like reset the game twice.
private player touch first. Private bool already recorded the winner. Pivate. Pirate. Ugh, you don't need to include private. It's implicit. Screw you. just not even run this if we already recorded the winner okay cool I got a win I got another win. He got the win. He got the win. I got the win. He got the win. All right. That is sufficiently fixed. Um Probably like one more thing I'll fix before I end the stream. I should at least let him let the enemy like flop over when he gets shoved. This code is so trashy. But I will fix it once I get the gameplay decent. Um, as far as I know, no one's using the code that I'm putting up there, so I can I can shit in my own bed if I want to, and I will. That's my right as an American. Uh, so the Rikishi script will get the parent. The rigid body and then uncheck freeze rotation. Neato! Whenever the guy gets shoved. So there's a thing get shoved. Let's go game object parent transform dot parent dot get component. Rigid body, uh, freeze rotation. Programmatically change freeze rotation. Unity script freeze rotation. Okay. So I can modify the constraints or I can just say freeze position enabled equals false. Let's give that a shot. Let's see if that gives me the behavior where he falls over. Oh, 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 God. Yep. He falls over. But the game resets too early. I want to watch him slide around like a 
whatever he's sliding around like. You get three seconds. Boom. Wow, he's staying upright for a long time. There you go. I should add a little torque on him, right? Don't you think? If I add it like near the top of his chest. Because I don't know where it's adding it. Presumably it's adding the force here, like right in this middle. I just want to watch these freeze rotation checkboxes go away when I push him. That's cool. Oop, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> nice. I have so many better plans for this, but I love how crappy this is right now. Little dubstep? What is this? What am I back in college? Fatality. That's actually not too bad. I mainly had to like it just because it was called Fatality. Because I love Mortal Kombat. Alright. So this is going okay. Boy, I wish I could figure out how to get that ragdoll to work. I'm confident that I will. He doesn't have weights pointed to any of his bones around his midsection. Um, because whenever I would spread his legs, his belly would get super skinny. Which is unrealistic. So does that look red or does it look pink? I don't know. Colorblind people are just going to see like purple anyway. Hmm. Uh, I think one thing I want to fix is that you actually have to be near him to push him. Whoop. Right now you can do it from anywhere. In fact... You can be way over here and still push him. <laughs> and the more you push him, the faster he slides. Slide away, slide away. Okay. Back to work. Jesus, music is like really intense. It's killing my chill vibes. Yep, too much. As fun as that is, it's way too fast. Because uh, I certainly do not develop that fast. So I think whenever the player does a shove, I should do like a a box cast to like about here uh, let me show you right about here I should do a box cast in this region <laughs> Boom, and then shove him over if the enemy is like right in the line of fire. Okay, so let's do that. Probably gonna do that in the Rikishi controller. And I 
I probably want I should pay attention to where this point on his body is because this is where I'm going to do the box cast from <laughs> player create empty Um, people call them hit boxes, right? Where you can get hit. I don't know if I want to call it a hit box. This is the box that does the hitting, not the box that gets hit. Shove collider position. Ints, 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 ints. Put it like there. I just need to create a collider right there. Transform, shove, what did I call it? Shove collider position. Okay. I want, I want them to assign that in the inspector. I don't want to have to calculate that with code. That would be stupid. So. Whenever shove force happens, I should do a box cast. Physics dot box cast. And then return all the things that hit it. Ints, 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 ints. Um. Well, basically, I would put it at the shove collider position and the half extents. Ouch. Whatever. It's going to do the meter cube, which is going to be way too big. And since it's half, it's going to be a two square meter cube. Let's see if we can visualize this. Debug dot draw. Nope. Gotta use gizmos. I hate gizmos. 
Void on draw gizmos. Bump, 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 bump. Vector three. Last box. Debug collider position. Debug collider half extents. Debug collider direction. Debug collider position equals shove collider position. Position. Debug collider position. Debug collider half extents equals vector three dot one. Debug collider direction equals shove collider position dot forward. Okay, let's draw a gizmo. Gizmos dot Dang it. I know what I'll do. I'll just fucking make one. Um, where is this thing? All right, add component collider. <laughs> Let's scale the whole thing down. Whoa, F bombs. I should be able to get the values that I want from this thing, right? Plobs bubbly. Holy crap.
excuse me, get component. Reference collider position. I should be able to say, yeah, put it there. And then what the half extents? I might just be able to do that because my reference collider size is one one one. Let's try it. All right, gotta quit. Debug.log. Hit stuff. My bad, I gotta do string. Ooh. Come on, Unity. Load up for me. Thank you. Shove collider position has not been assigned. Okay. That would be here. Interesting. It hit three things. What all did it hit? Clearly, it's hitting him. So when I look away from him, it's two. But when I look at him, it's three. All right. Reference collider dot. Bounds dot extends. Well, if I could just use new C sharp features and not have to use this anymore, I would be such a happy guy. Uh, nope. Nope. There we go. Zero point two, zero point one, zero point one.
vector three shove collider half extends. So it is actually a lot less than a half by a half by a half because I did one divided by two, which would be a half for the X, Y, and Z. But when I build the collider that I want in the UI and get its extents, it's more than that. So Remember if it's collider, shove collider position to get component box collider. Never actually seen a tutorial on how to do this. I don't know if this is what people do or not. Shove collider half extents. It seems like the API to doing a box cast would be easier, but I don't know. I think it makes sense. Uh, my f my go to is to always like draw the shapes that I'm trying to work with on the screen, or like you saw, like make a collider and put it where I want it and then just copy the values from it instead of trying to do math ain't nobody got time for that reference collider bounds dot oh, extents divided by two can I do that to a vector well that's just bitwise coordinate wise do that looks like it okay I'm not going to draw a gizmo. I'm not going to deal with these debug things. I'm just going to use shove collider half extends. I can even get rid of that collider too but when I'm done with it. Reference collider shove collider position dot remove component can I do that the game object dot remove component. <laughs> unity remove component I get the component and then I destroy it interesting Destroy. Destroy. Reference collider. It's only there for a reference. I don't actually need it in game. Unassigned. How was it unassigned again? Oh, I only assigned it to the player. Well, he doesn't need one. I suppose he does. <laughs> he can just use the... Well, let's just give him one. Oh boy. This is that crappy code that I'm talking about. Right now the enemy isn't shoving anybody so he doesn't have a shove collider position. There we go. Bonk, I hit stuff, one stuff, I hit stuff, one stuff, I hit stuff, zero stuff. That really does seem weird that it's hitting him from a mile away.
Oh, it also draws where the ray in box cast extends to. The center of the collider, the transform local scale. It's strange that they're using the local scale as the half extents. That seems wrong. Because wouldn't that be the full box size in each dimension? Oh, you can draw a cube at a local scale. No, I got all confused. I thought to be a square, it needed to be the same. It would be a cube, you would need the same X, Y, and Z. That's why I wasn't using that. Cool. Let's gank this code. Gickety, gickety, gank. I want to see me some colliders. Every frame it's going to do a box cast, though. I guess I want to see it, so that's fine by me. If I can go away, if I can go away. I'm not sure the purpose of the collider that they have on the object. In collider. Attach a script to a game object. Make sure it has a collider. All they use is the center. Collider, bounds, center. Is this in world space? Oh, God. This is that bull crap where it's uh, access a line bounding box.
Love it. Use the reference collider, why don't you? A lot of red squigglies. A lot of red squigglies. But no build errors. So, I don't know what's going on there. All right, let's just see what they do. And sixty eight. What M Collider is null? Well, out M hit is null. No, it's there. Where's the null pointer coming from, guy? You're lying. Ain't no no pointers here. All right. I need a break. I think my brain has officially turned to mush. I just want you to shove this guy. Why can't you just shove him? Okay. We'll figure it out. Next time. See y'all. I'm out of here.